Mark Thompson, a 35-year-old bank manager, lived with his wife Sarah and their two children in a cozy suburban home. Their daughter Emily was in first grade, while their son Tommy was just three years old. Sarah had quit her job to become a full-time homemaker when Tommy was born. One evening, as Mark returned from work, he found Sarah lying on the couch, looking exhausted. Rough day, he asked, loosening his tie. Sarah nodded weakly. The usual. Tommy's been fussy all day, and I had to rush to pick up Emily from school. Mark sighed. I don't understand why you're always so tired. You're at home all day, not dealing with difficult clients or managing a team like I do. Sarah's eyes widened in disbelief. You think staying at home is easy? Well, it's certainly not as demanding as my job, Mark replied, heading to the kitchen to grab a snack. Little did Mark know that his perspective was about to change dramatically. The next morning, Sarah woke up with a high fever and severe body aches. Mark had to rush her to the hospital, where the doctor diagnosed her with a serious case of pneumonia. She'll need to stay here for at least a week, the doctor informed Mark. She needs complete rest. Mark's mind raced. Who would take care of the kids? The house? All the daily chores? He realized he had no choice but to take a week off work to manage everything. How hard can it be? He thought to himself. Mark's day one began with a sudden awakening. Tommy woke up crying at 5 a.m., needing a diaper change and his milk bottle. By the time Mark calmed him down, it was time to get Emily ready for school. Daddy, where's my blue hairband? Emily asked, pouting. Mark searched frantically through drawers, finally finding it under a pile of clothes. After dropping Emily off at school, he headed to the supermarket with Tommy. Okay, we need everything, Mark muttered, pushing the cart with one hand while trying to keep Tommy from grabbing items off the shelves with the other. Back home, he attempted to cook lunch while Tommy clung to his leg, crying for attention. The pasta ended up overcooked, and the sauce was lumpy. The afternoon was a whirlwind of laundry, cleaning, and trying to keep Tommy entertained. Before he knew it, it was time to pick up Emily from school. Daddy, can we go to the park? Emily asked hopefully. Mark glanced at his watch. Sorry, sweetie. We need to get home so I can start dinner. Emily's face fell. But mommy always takes us to the park after school. Mark felt a pang of guilt. He hadn't realized Sarah did that every day. The evening was chaos. While he was bathing Tommy, he heard Emily call out, Daddy, I spilled my juice. By the time both kids were in bed, the house looked like a tornado had hit it. Mark collapsed on the couch, too tired to even think about cleaning up. The next few days followed a similar pattern. Mark struggled to keep up with the endless cycle of chores, meals, and childcare. He burned dinners, shrunk clothes in the laundry, and forgot to pay bills until the last minute. One afternoon, while trying to vacuum with Tommy on his hip, Mark's boss called. Thompson, we need you to come in tomorrow. There's an important client meeting. Mark hesitated. I'm sorry, sir, but I can't. My wife is still in the hospital, and I'm taking care of our kids. His boss sounded annoyed. Can't you get a babysitter? It's not just about babysitting, Mark explained, surprising himself with his own words. There's so much to do at home. It's a full-time job in itself. As the week progressed, Mark gained a new appreciation for everything Sarah did. He noticed the little things he had never paid attention to before. How she always remembered Emily's favorite snacks, how she knew exactly how to soothe Tommy's tantrums, and how she managed to keep the house running smoothly day after day. On the seventh day, as Mark drove to the hospital to bring Sarah home, he felt a mix of relief and shame. He helped her into the car, noticing how pale and tired she still looked. Sarah, he said softly, I owe you an apology. This week has been the most exhausting and eye-opening experience of my life. I had no idea how much you do for our family every single day. You're not just staying at home doing nothing. You're working harder than anyone I know. Sarah smiled weakly. It's nice to hear you say that, Mark. Being a homemaker is challenging, but I love taking care of our family. Mark nodded. From now on, things are going to be different. I'll help more around the house and with the kids. And I promise to never undervalue your work again. As they drove home, Mark reflected on the past week. He realized that the work of a homemaker, while often invisible, 
was crucial to the family's well-being. It required patience, multitasking skills, and endless love. From that day forward, Mark made a conscious effort to appreciate Sarah's contributions. He started helping with chores, spending more quality time with the kids, and acknowledging the importance of Sarah's role in their family. The experience taught Mark a valuable lesson. Every job, whether in an office or at home, has its own challenges and rewards. True partnership in a family means recognizing and valuing each other's contributions, no matter what form they take. As he watched Sarah kiss the children goodnight that evening, Mark smiled, grateful for the newfound understanding and respect he had gained for the unsung heroes of many homes, the hardworking homemakers. Danzi, suburban, jingjiao zhujai chu de, adjective, relating to a suburb, homemaker, jia ting zhu fu, noun, a person who manages a home and often raises children instead of earning money from a job. Rough. Jianguda. Lingren Bukwaida. Adjective. Difficult or unpleasant. Fussy. Inghai. Nanyi Chuyuda. Adjective. A fussy baby is unhappy or difficult to please. Demanding. Fei Shi Fei Li Da. Hao Fei Jing Li Da. Adjective. Needing a lot of time, attention, or energy. Pneumonia. Feiyan. Noun. A serious illness in which one or both lungs become red and swollen and filled with liquid. Diaper. Niao bu. Noun. A square of thick soft paper or cloth that is fastened around a baby's bottom and between its legs to absorb its urine and solid waste. Hairband. Shu fa dai. Noun. A strip of cloth or a curved plastic strip worn in the hair that fits closely over the top of the head and behind the ears. Pout. Sheng qi huo xing gan de jue zui. Verb. To push the lower lip forward to show you are annoyed, or to push both lips forward in a sexually attractive way. Frantically. Jin zhang mang lan di. Adverb. Done in a hurried way and in a state of excitement or confusion. Lumpy. Biao mian you kuai zhuang wu de. Adjective. Covered with or containing lumps. Chore. Ru chang suo shi. Noun. A job or piece of work that is often boring or unpleasant, but needs to be done regularly. Vacuum. Yong xi chen qi qing sao. Verb. To use a vacuum cleaner to collect dust, dirt, etc. Tantrum. Shua. Hai zi. Pi qi. Noun. A sudden period of uncontrolled anger, like a young child's.